Hi guys, my guest today literally has put function into the martial arts. Being a successful fight team owner slash promoter, as well as being a successful traditional martial arts school owner, he has witnessed firsthand the value that the martial arts has on development of community. I've been learned from the likes of grandmasters Lee Kun Hong and Wang Gong in Chole Fut Kung Fu and master Andrew Chung in Wing Chun. He has a background steeped in tradition, but that has not deterred him from flowing with the modern by adapting and learning from other arts like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, to which he has a black belt on the Carlson Gracie Miami and San Shao. Today, we welcome Sifu John Wei. Hey, Mark, thank you very much for having me on the show. Well, thank you very much for being here, sir. You know, I don't want to take up too much of your time. We're just going to go ahead and go straight into those questions, okay? Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, sir. With being a successful martial arts school owner, the greatest question one can always ask you, how did you get started into the martial arts, sir? Uh, that, that's pretty easy. My background is it's pretty familiar. Um, I was a huge Bruce Lee fan when I was young. And I was born in Hong Kong. I moved here when I was at a very young age of seven. And um, I needed to learn self-defense. I needed to, you know, to uh, uh, find something that I, I like and that had some fighting applications. So it was obviously you had, you know, the Bruce Lee culture and the movies uh, uh, out during that time. And me wanting to have some tie into my culture, uh, Wing Chun was the obvious choice. And I have fallen in love with Wing Chun. I loved everything about it. I loved the background, the history, you know, and uh, Bruce Lee had trained in it. And I, I, it fit my body structure, too, as well, too. So I found the Wing Chun Seafood here in, uh, in South Florida. And that's how I got started in uh, training Kung Fu and martial arts. All right. All right. So from there... How did it progress from, uh, that was with Sifu Andrew Chung, right? Master That's correct. Chung. That's correct. Okay, so how did you, that progress from Master Chung and then be with uh, Lee Kun Hong after? Right? Okay, well, um, what happened was when I would travel to Hong Kong, um, I wanted to uh, continue my training there. I would spend a good amount of time during the summertime in Hong Kong. And my, I asked my mom to find an instructor and uh, we, we, you know, Wing Chun back then was, uh, they had a lot of associations with triads and gangs. So it wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't a polished image. And we went to this uh, uh, martial arts supply store uh, near Nathan Road. And uh, my mom had talked to the person who owned it there. And he says, I don't, he goes, I don't want to recommend Wing Chun, but I'm going to recommend a Troy Lee Foot Seafood. And I got interested in it because I wanted to compete at tournaments. And I didn't want to just do Wing Chun forms, but I wanted to do something a little more flashy. But I also wanted a style that was applicable, that it was applicable, that had some fighting technique in it. So I read a little bit about Charlie Foot. I liked it. And that's why I met Wong Gong. And I started training Charlie Foot uh, with him first. And uh, fast forward uh, uh, years later, I had, you know, I found out that Lee Kun Hong was moving to Florida. So, um, uh, we connected and, you know, he didn't speak English well at the time. And um, I would, I told him, I said, listen, you move down here. I would help you, you know, uh, build a school. And that's how that relationship got started. So, yeah, I was very lucky to have trained with some really, really good seafood at the time. And that's how I got my start in Wing Chun and Charlie Foot. Right. All right. All right. So, well, before you got into uh, Chole Foot, did you have much fight experience using Wing Chun? And, or Yeah, well, I, I was, you know, back in the 80s, you know, 70s and 80s, I was the only Asian kid around. It oh. wasn't like nowadays where there's, you know, there's Asian cultures everywhere. Was, you know, I grew up here. Um, I have a smart mouth when I was a kid, and I had to, uh, had to learn how to defend myself and stand up for myself. And that's why I liked about Wing Chun. It taught me very fast hands. I was also, um, you know, infatuated with kicking too at the time. So, you know, I, I learned how to uh, incorporate kicks into, into my training. But it was, it was definitely a necessity when I was younger, um, you know, being able to, you know, stand up for myself and, and, and back up the, the, the smart mouth that I had when I was a kid. <laughs> I can definitely understand that. I understand that. So 
when I was at the Trolleyfoot School, you know, they'd always hear about the um, the rivalry between Wing Chun and Trolleyfoot, right? More specifically, that rivalry, especially in Hong Kong itself, mm -hmm. right? right. Um, so th this would always happen because there happened to be a Wing Chun school, like literally right around the corner from 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 the Lee Kun Hong Trolleyfoot School. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so. I, I always wanted to go over there and, and speak with the Sifu, see what that was all about. But then everybody would be like, no, oh, why you want to go over to Wing Chun? Why you want to go over there for? Stay over here. And no need to go over here. Everything you need is over here in Chun. So, right. all right, I understand the, 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 the separation or like, it's like faction. Basically. I mean, I understand, right? So you having studied both Wing Chun and Chole Fu, right? Now, you've obviously seen strengths and weaknesses between the two. Um, are there similarities, though? Well, I mean, the, the rivalry back in Hong Kong with the trolley foot and Wing Chun is very real. I mean, it was. You, know, you have the long style of trolley foot, and you have the short range, range of Wing Chun, and the fighting theories are very, very different. Um, and, you know, knowing this as a kid and, and, and being, and, you know, being very into the Chinese culture and the Chinese Kung Fu background, you know, I read about both and I was like, I need to learn both because I want to be able to, I love the theory of Wing Chun, but I also like the power of Charlie Foot. Now, you know, keep this in mind. And I always say this is, you know, uh, the development of Wing Chun, you know, uh, got popularized in Hong Kong. Okay. And, you know, Chinese people in general are smaller frame, you know, versus here in America, um, you know, there's, they're, they're, they're a little larger frame. So um, if, if you're um, having to have an altercation with somebody with a larger size, you need a little more power, okay? So I like both. And for me personally, I learned to adapt the Wing Chun theory along with Charlie Foot. Okay, this is something, you know, I, I taught my students the way we move. Even to today, you watch my fighters inside the cage, we move up very angular. We don't move very straight forward. We take the angle when we move forward. Um, and also, you know, what you said about, you know, when you said, hey, your seafood said, don't go to that school, stay here. That it's very cultural. It's not so much has to do with Chinese martial arts, but it's also a Chinese culture that, um, you know, you know, you stay here and you stay committed, you stay loyal. And now that bleeds into the Chinese Kung Fu systems where you train one style and that's it. It wasn't it wasn't uh, popular to train in multiple styles. And as a matter of fact, you know, Sifu's, many older Sifu's did not like that. Um, I grew up in, in the Kung Fu community because I speak the language. So I understand the whole cultural aspect. Um, that's where my opinion differs a, a little bit because, you know, in, in, in how Kung Fu is developed through the Shaolin Temple, they had the resources to, to bring in all the different Sifu's share their knowledge to the, the monks and that's how they increased their knowledge of martial arts i thought that was incredible so i didn't understand why if somebody can teach me how to throw a better kick why can't i adapt to that even though i'm a specific stylist right um but i also believe in mastering a style i i believe everybody should have some sort of base okay even today like my team is known we're known as strikers Okay, because they, you know, this is our background. We came, you know, we, we understand San Shao, we train Muay Thai, we train a lot of striking arts, but we learn to, we learn very good jujitsu, we learn very good wrestling, and we learn to adapt that into our fighting style, you know. So it's pretty much the same nowadays as it is before, but, um, you know, the, the rivalry is still there, but at least for my personal martial arts experience, I have learned to adapt it to, and the base of my system and discipline is Wing Chun and Charlie Foot. And I use, you know, interestingly, I use the same philosophy when I go and train in other styles, even in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, a lot of the gi fighting is a lot of Wing Chun wrist, wrist escapes, a lot of theories I use in our mentality and our philosophy, how we train, uh, even uh, BJJ, you know, mastering a technique, doing it over again. I, we adapt the same philosophy and we apply that to other disciplines. That is absolutely incredible. That is absolutely incredible. And it, you know, it's, 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 
it's awesome to 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 keep such a broad view and be able to you know uh, incorporate concepts from different arts use uh, like you know like your inspiration for starting martial arts use what is effective and throw away what is useless but right, what right. let me add to that too is that you know i also believe you know yes yeah, systems are important you know there, there's definitely inferior systems and there's superior system in every fighting style right but i also strongly believe it it, it it you got to credit the individual each individual despite what style they learn you know, they understand, and we're talking about fighting concept and strategy, if they understand and, and they train in that type of atmosphere, right, it really depends on the individual, the individual instructor, right? He could train in a system that maybe is not as popular, but he can learn to adapt it to different things and, and learn to apply different effective fighting techniques to his own system, to his own style. But I think that's very important as, as well, too. Because, you know, in, in the Chinese culture, in the Chinese Kung Fu culture, you know, we, it's, uh, you know, pride is very important, saving face, you know, having a, um, having a reputation very important, you know, in, in the Chinese martial arts community. But I also think that, you know, that's kind of where the downside is because they needed these, these teams or sifus or even students needed to go out there and test their skills on a platform that you know, conducive to, you know, fighting systems. So I think that's pretty important too when we're talking about fight strategies and systems and styles. True, 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 true. I understand that. Putting it, um, pressure testing. Is pressure testing, yes. But putting everything under the test to see if it works or not. And, you know, a lot of people, um, a lot of people, or, or I wouldn't say a lot of people, some people, I might get some fact for some, from some people when I say this, but, you know, like, in our culture over here in the United States, um, we don't fight so much, right? Like on the street. Um, I mean, of course, people fight on the street, but it's not as rampant as, say, outside the United States, right? right. So due to our cultural co constraints, the way that we pressure test, or at least the way that I see we pressure test, is through competition. It's through sport. And right? that's, that's the best and really the only way that we truly pressure test any of the techniques that we do right over here. So um, usually I, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I agree with you. Right? So I can definitely see with um, how with your fight team, like how you've, you've promoted it so much. You've promoted it so well because you, you've taken the functionality, as we said, Right, of the martial art and you know they put it into that test right and then you that you've done that personally for yourself and now you can share that experience with your students who are now uh, you have a couple of students who are actually champions right now MMA yes. Champions, right? yes right? so I, it's, it's great that you've been able to relate that to you know a few of your students right and and yet some of the, a couple of your students are current champions, but you've also had past champions as well. Correct, correct. I mean, Kung, you know, when we're talking about, you know, fighting, MMA, Muay Thai, you know, any type of combative art, you know, Kung Fu has always look, been looked down upon. OK, and when I was young, that used to upset me. And I was like, wait a second, you know, we understand the concepts. We understand how to train for, it, you know. And so, and, you know, and back then when I was, uh, um, had discussion with other seafoods, you know, this was an important topic for, for us. You know, we wanted to get out there and show the world that we understood the fighting concepts. And, you know, I actually, you know, I guess personally, you can say I continue to do that because when we first started competing down here, there wasn't a lot of sand shout tournaments. Okay. So we had to go fight at Muay Thai tournaments, kickboxing tournaments, whichever platform that allowed us to, you know, do striking were allowed. And people would say, they would see us fight and they would say, wow, I didn't know Kung Fu people would fight like that. It's, it's kind of, it's kind of disappointing, right, Mark, when you, when you hear that. And I've been training Kung Fu my whole life. Um, when we used to go to jujitsu tournaments, I was at Naga standing line, my student, my student had a shirt on. The, the person registering looked up and goes, what does Kung Fu people know about Brazilian jujitsu? Not really in a, in a, in a, in a way where they're making fun, but they're actually curious, you know? And same thing, when we started fighting MMA, one of the promoters 
at, talked to me afterward. He goes, wow, because I didn't think Kung Fu people could fight like that. Well, you know, my answer to them is, you know, Kung Fu people, that's our background, but we just learned very good wrestling, very good jujitsu. So that's how we learned to adapt. And I think it's important because now when we're out there, especially, you know, we're in Florida. I mean, this is like the mecca of fight sports, right? High level strikers, high level Muay Thai, high level MMA, big teams down here. And the amateurs look like pros. So if you can even compete at that level, you know, even an amateur level, forget the pro. I think there's something to be said that at least you understand, you know what you're doing, you know, as a coach, as a team, as a fighter. And, you know, I just want to break the barrier that, hey, listen, it's not really just about the style. It's about how you train and how you understand the different arts. And, you know, with MMA, there's they're striking, wrestling, jiu-jitsu, ground and pound. Well, you can't nowadays, you know, you can't go into an MMA event and just be a striker. You can do that 10 years ago. You can't do it now because these fighters are so intelligent, the way they train, they cross train and everything. So I, I think it's important, to, you know, to point out, you know, is that, you know, with, with the Kung Fu existence, you know, listen, I love training form and I love training weapons. Not every day I want to go in there and, and, and bang it out, right? But when you're talking about self-defense applications, you know, combat sports, then I think, you know, it's important that the instructors and students have to understand how to train appropriately in order to talk about those topics. Make sense, Mark? <laughs> yeah, it makes complete sense. It makes complete sense to me. That's awesome, John. That's awesome. So speaking of that now, speaking about Kung Fu, right? Kung Fu itself literally means a skill acquired over time. Correct. Right? What would you say as Kung Fu in terms of martial arts, right? What would you consider is the hardest part in developing your Kung Fu? Ooh, it's, it's the time. It's the time and the commitment, you know? I mean, that's really pretty much everything, you know, is, is even in, in mastering the forms and the weapon, right? Um, you know, it does take time. And, and I was always taught that when you first learn a form, that is the time to master it. Because once you learn it, and then a year or two years down the line, you may not practice it as hard. And I always, somebody, I think, I don't remember who taught me that, but it was very important. It stuck in my head. And I think it's just, you know, there's no shortcuts in, in, in Kung Fu. And that's why I love about the philosophy of it and how it translates to life. You know, and, and that's what we teach at our school. You know, the basic philosophy is, hey, listen, you got to put in the time, you got to put in the work, and you got to dedicate yourself to whatever you want to do. You know, schoolwork, relationship, you know, finance, careers, business, kung fu, martial arts. I mean, it, it all relates. And I think that's really the hardest for, for me as an individual is, okay, staying on point. Because I understand the concept, how to master something. It's just staying on point and, and making sure you're doing it over and over again until you get it done. So it's the time. The skill is only developed over time. And I completely yes, agree with you, I completely agree with you. Now, I have one more lofty question for you right now. Right? All right. If you could teach the new generation only one thing, no, sorry, should I say the new generation of martial artists only one thing, what would it be? Wow, like one thing as in philosophy or one thing as in like a style? Your pick. One of the things is I would, I would teach them to be very open-minded, like learn to adapt. And I think that's one of the most important things, you know, uh, without restricting to style, you know, really be open-minded. Like whoever wants to teach you something, just learn it, right? Take in the good, throw out the bad. And I think that's that's the most important. And, and probably if you're looking at all my students, you know, that's what they get introduced when they walk into my school is that, you know, we, we are very open minded. You know, where if, if you can teach us to punch a better way or to move a better way, we're going to learn to adapt to and we're going to be like, wow. You know, and it's, it's interesting because the, the culture of martial arts, especially where I'm from, traditional martial arts, you have the hierarchy, right? The Sifu and the students and the students learn from Sifus. Let me tell you something. I learn just as much from my own students as maybe more what I learn from them than what I teach nowadays. 
So I've, you know, I have to practice what I preach and uh, I'm very open-minded. I'll go train with the, the fight guy, team. I'll train with uh, jujitsu guys who are lower belt, who are much better than me in technique. You know, why can I learn? I'm not going to stand there and go, well, you know, I'm, I'm a black belt. I don't learn from people lower than me. So I think being open-mindedness and being open to different ideas, theories, technique, I think if somebody can, can adapt that, I, I think they will excel pretty well. That is a great answer, being open-minded. And that's great advice, not only for martial arts, but for life. Gotcha. I completely get you. Well, it's interesting. They say, they say there's a mastermind group I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm, I'm involved with, and they said the first question you ask when you hire an employee is, are they coachable? And I thought that was freaking awesome. I was like, man, and if they tell you that they can't be coached, you can't, you can't use them. They're, they're, they're useless to you. You know, so I guess this is pretty much the same concept. Be open-minded. Be coachable. Of course. Coachable. Well, um, another way to say it is uh, empty your cup. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Very good. Very good. Very good. Sifu John, I got one more question for you. All right. How can you be contacted, Sifu John? Oh, easy. I'm all over social media. You can, my personal is, Instagram is John Way underscore official, or you can follow my academy, John Way Martial Arts. Um, just follow us on Instagram, watch what you're doing, connect with me, you know, and uh, I'm happy to uh, talk with anybody. Information for Sifu John Way will be in the description below. Also in the description below is a link for Feiyu Shoes. Get the best prices, the best styles, and the best deals. All that fair you shoes. Click the link in the description. Sifu John, I do have to thank you very much for the time you've taken to speak with me today, sir. Thank you very much for having me on there. I appreciate it. Have a good day now. Okay. Have a good one. Bye bye.